Today we're shooting a super fun beginner versus pro photographer challenge. I'm here with the talented Sydney Ray. She's gonna be our model for today's shoot. And we're here with our beginner photographer, Tony. Get the cameraman. <laughs> we're here at Reyes Studios in Toronto. It's probably one of my favorite studios in Toronto. So if you're a photographer and you're looking for a studio, highly recommend Reyes Studios. We're gonna do a quick little introduction and then we're gonna get to shooting. And then after shooting, we're gonna go home and critique the photos. So Tony's our beginner photographer for today's challenge. What made you get into photography? Uh, growing up, I've always had a camera on me. Uh, as the oldest kid, I was tasked to take pictures on family vacations or family gatherings. And so uh, that kind of started my entire journey of uh, taking pictures. Have you ever taken portraits before? Never. This is the first one. And what are you shooting with today? Shooting with a A7 II and the kit lens, okay. I'll be honest. The kit lens, no idea what it is. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Are you nervous? A little bit. I think I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Let's see what you got. Okay, let's do the first thing. Uh, can we sit on the couch? And then, okay. All right, love it. Awesome, that looks good. Uh, no. Could you do the, like, the, the glasses down? Yeah, 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 perfect. Uh, let's see. It's kind of like this. Okay, Across so the table. Like <laughs> Nice, perfect. What settings are you shooting at? <laughs> uh, 5.6, 1 over 60, and then ISO 250. Are you all manual? I'm all manual, wow. yeah. I think autos, uh, I don't like how the auto sometimes looks, so I try not to use auto unless I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like if it doesn't work out, and then I was like, okay, screw it, last resort, auto. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I was thinking something like this, but I don't, I was looking at it earlier, but I don't think that would work. Hmm, okay, that works. Had a foot up, right? Yeah, so one foot. Or, like, I think it was on the chair. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get some of the lines in. Okay. <laughs> Mystery. Oh. Can you have another one? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and like, one, like a color. color. And you want my lights crossed? Uh, could you do something? Uh, was it kind of like more like Yeah, like that. Like, like that? that. Mm -hmm. Okay. But just like this? Yeah. Okay. Could you uh, maybe scoop back a bit? In between the plants? Yeah, yeah. I think that's all I had in mind. Okay. Yes. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you, thank you. Any final thoughts towards the camera? Uh, that was actually a lot more fun than I thought. <laughs> I thought it would be like nervous trying to get everything uh, perfect, but I think Sydney was amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like a modeling tip and like just making sure you take out chewing gum. Also bracelets too, like headbands and stuff. This is an actual bracelet. This is mm. my day bracelet, so I'll keep it on. But um, like if it's like bracelets or like rubber bands or anything, I'm prone for that. Please take them off. Like take them off. It's actually stickler when it comes to post, and it's super annoying. So, mm. My only thought is, what time is it now? Tony had ten minutes. Do we limit Stephanie? You know? Five minutes. I want time to do the other things that we want to do. He's trying to. He's trying to show you up. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll say. I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. 
I'm actually gonna move the chair like, like here. So the one thing that I noticed Tony doing was that he positioned you like really, really close to the background. The thing is, is like in this corner, there's so much distractions here. So if you're, if you're not creating that separation and like what lens are you shooting with? 3.5 to 5.6. So you're not gonna get like a super, super blurry background, especially with that lens. So the best thing you can do is like create that separation between your background so that it kind of um, blurs out the background and then makes her pop, right? So if, if she's like right against here, there's no separation at all. Even if you're shooting with like a 1.4, you're still gonna get all this in the background. Let's take one shot here. That right there. Can you flick your hair back or can I do it? Yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah, don't be afraid to ask models if you want to like change them, however. You want to kind of look first and see if there's anything that's like sticking out. Like see this hair right here? It's kind of like sticking out, kind of ruining the photo. So if you can like look at your model first and see if there's anything wrong, just like the bracelet thing, clothing tags, same thing with her hair. Sometimes you'll see like the model's hair, like there's like a bunch of like, what are they called? Flyaways. Flyaways sticking up and then having to go through post and removing every single flyaway from every photo, it's a pain. So your hair's fine, but like if it was like a lot of flyaways, I would tell her to brush it. Okay, let's take one shot here. So I had one shot in mind going into this and I ended up getting it, but because I was so fixated on getting that one shot and also giving Tony some tips, I didn't end up shooting anything other than these. So I guess it's not really a challenge. It honestly sucks because I had planned to have extra time once we were done shooting the video to continue shooting. That way Tony can utilize the tips and advice I told him, but I only had like five minutes down. to shoot my portion Perfect. before we ran out of time in the studio. But hey, this is my first time doing a video like this. Next time I'll know to book more studio time to have enough time to shoot a video like this. I'm gonna do something against this white wall here. Let's bring this out. Bring this out. So if you stand like right, right here, I'm gonna get low and then I want you to do some like really crazy like street style yeah, poses. Yeah. yeah, lean over, arms yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Look at you go. Give me one second here. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. A little bit more here. Lean right into the camera, like as close as you can. Well, that was close. Yeah, perfect like that. Bottom arm up a little bit. Closer to your face. Yeah, perfect. Give me one second. Hold that again. Arm out. We'll do the same thing, but you're gonna kick your, your shoe out. Huh? Yeah. Give me one second. Towards you or like? Uh, you can go like out here. There? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Arms out, give me, yeah, hold that for a second. And then arms out. I've got some fire ones. Sick. Pretty wild ones. I mean, it would have looked nicer if there was like, a clean backdrop. Yeah. But. Post. 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 Everything post. Everything post. These are sick. Okay. Okay, so we're at home, I have the computer in front of me, and like I said at the studio, we're gonna critique Tony's photos to see what he did wrong, what he did right, or things I would do differently. I just wanted to say for Tony's first ever portrait session, he did an amazing job. He directed the model, it looked like he knew exactly what type of poses he wanted, and seemed like he really put in the time and did his homework to make something out of this opportunity. Not many people realize how hard it could be to get a model to shoot with if you don't have a portfolio or even just spend money on a studio for a shoot you're not getting paid for. So I'm really glad he took advantage of this opportunity and can use it to start building his portfolio. 
Tony is actually a subscriber and because of that, he saw my posting and got this opportunity. So if you wanna know more about opportunities coming up like this, make sure to follow my socials and subscribe to my newsletter, The Creative Press. But let's take a look at his photos and yes, he did give me permission to critique his photos and go as hard as I want. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the settings he was using. What settings are you shooting at? Uh, 5.6, one over 60 and then ISO 250. The one thing that I don't like about these settings is the shutter speed. It's just way too slow for any portraits. Because shutter speed controls how long your shutter stays open for or how fast our shutter opens and closes, any moving subject is gonna be directly affected by this setting. It's like this. Imagine my hands are the shutter. You take the photo, the shutter opens and closes right away. And the sensor captures whatever it saw in the amount of time it was open for. But with a slow shutter speed, your sensor is exposed for a longer period of time, like this. So if your model blinks or even just sways closer to the camera and you're shooting at a slow shutter speed, you're gonna introduce motion blur in your photo. And that's what happened here. You can see that Sydney's eyes are not that sharp and actually look a little out of focus or blurred. Compare that to one of the photos I took and you can see that mine is actually much sharper in the eyes. What you really want is that shutter to be opening and closing as fast as possible to freeze any motion in your shot. Now, some people say double your focal length. So if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, shoot at one 100 and that's a great guideline, but I would say that's like the bare minimum. Like if I have no other choice, that's the lowest I'm going. My general rule is I typically won't go below one two fiftieths, and that's because I wanna make sure my model is sharp and in focus 100% of the time. As for other settings like aperture, he was limited to 5.6 because he was shooting on the kit lens, which had a variable aperture that he couldn't change. My suggestion is don't be scared of increasing your ISO. Cameras nowadays have no problem handling high ISOs, and we also have AI that does a pretty good job if we need to remove noise. So if you increase your shutter speed to 1 to 50th, you can balance out your exposure by increasing your ISO. If you want to learn how to adjust your settings on the fly easy and basically master manual mode, I actually posted a video last week talking about this. Aside from that, it was nice to see that Tony was shooting in manual and not automatic. I really like these photos here, but one thing that I would have liked to see was just some separation here. The bookshelf and everything behind our subject is still very sharp and kind of distracting. So if he could have made the background a little blurrier, it would have been just perfect. At least I think so. Now, like I said at the studio, an easy way to create that background blur is just to create separation between the model and the background. Instead of having your model sit inches in front of the bookshelf, tell her to sit four feet in front of it. Even if you are shooting at an aperture of f5.6, like Tony was, you can still get that blurry background by creating separation and even zooming in to get compression. If we go to this shot here, he actually did just that. The background is nice and blurry and our subject isn't getting lost in the background. This is what I would have liked to see in the other photos. Now, I understand this is completely subjective. Everyone has their own style, but this is what I would have changed if I was taking these. Other advice, like Sid and I said at the studio, make sure you're looking over your model. It's super important. You don't wanna be doing extra work or spending hours in post. So just keep in mind that it only takes seconds to remove that hair elastic from their wrist or to get her to brush her hair then to take five to 20 minutes per photo in post. Okay, so future Stefano here. I was just putting together this video and noticed one other thing that I should mention because it is important. While I was watching the video over, I noticed that Tony didn't show Sydney any of the photos he was getting. And this is something that I would say is an absolute must for every shoot. This allows a model to see the photos, but also point out something they may not like or something they wanna try again. I'll quite literally give my camera to a model and let them scroll through all the photos. They'll usually think of some other poses they wanna do or even see a pose that maybe they think they could do better at. It. 
It's better that this happens during the shoot than to deliver something they don't like after. It's also important while you shoot to compliment the model. Say things like, you're doing amazing, you look great. Even compliment the poses like, oh, I really like this pose. All these things make the model feel more confident, but also reassures them that all of this is not a big waste of time. It also brings out the most natural poses. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The other thing I told Tony is don't be afraid to pull up poses on your phone. If you don't know any, have something set up like an iPad on the table with poses that you can always go back and refer to. There's nothing wrong with that. Other than that, Tony did an amazing job. I love that he got a variety of different shots. I like that he came to the studio prepared with poses in mind, and I like that he had fun and enjoyed it. The goal of this video was to help other beginner photographers, but instead of sitting here giving you tips from my desk, I thought maybe watching another beginner and learning from them would have a little bit more value. So if you did find this video useful and you want to see more like this, make sure to click that like button and leave a comment and let me know that you would like to see more videos like this. But that's it for me. I'll see you in the next one.